Hello YouTube! It's been a while. My name is Jakub Steiner and uh, to refresh the content of the GNOME design channel I'd like to show you what we've been up to uh, with regards to these things. The Wacom land of tablets. This one uh, includes touch but I'm gonna be solely focusing on the actual stylus functionality. So let's let's get going. So as you can see, I have a dual screen setup here, and I only have one tablet, um, which should be enough. The problem is how to map a regular sized tablet into a canvas that pretty much spans two displays. Well, most of the time you don't. You want to map a single tablet to a single screen. And as you can see here, the, the aspect ratio actually matches. My display matches the aspect ratio of the tablet, so I, I wouldn't... This is not the perfect example to demo this feature. But, you know, a common problem is that uh, uh, like a 4x3 tablet uh, being mapped to a 16 by 9 screen usually makes people draw a circle on the tablet but getting an ellipse on the display. So there's a big disconnect of, of, uh, of the aspect ratio, which is bad because it's really tough to get proportions right if there's the skew between these two uh, input and output devices. Settings, you can do this multiple I mean, multiple ways. So, uh, in the map to monitor uh, settings, where you define what um, display is being uh, mapped to the to the Wacom tablet, there's a keep aspect ratio tick box. And what this does is it actually letterboxes just the same way as uh, you see uh, on TVs uh, displaying, you know, wide, uh, widely shot uh, movies by adding a little black bar on top and bottom. In a similar way, this is done with the tablet. But the benefit, so you're essentially creating dead spaces on the tablet. But the effect is that a circle drawn on the tablet is a circle drawn on the, um, on the canvas. And while I'm talking about display mapping, um, there's another great thing that we have. We've introduced a shortcut to switch between the displays. Um, you know, I'm, I'm now drawing on the on the display, so it's absolutely mapped. The position of the of the stylus on the tablet is absolutely positioned to the cursor that's on the screen. But if I want to move to this to this other display, I would have to either move over to my mouse or push a little button, and now it toggles between mapping of a single screen on the right hand side to both screens being accessible to another push is uh, being just on one one display right now on the left side. Now this is I've assigned it with the um, with the button mapping configuration which is now easily accessible uh, and let's talk about that. Button mapping. Um, as you can see, there's, uh, there's quite a few buttons on this particular tablet. The one I have on the right, which we're gonna get to at the end of this video, is even more. Uh, so these buttons can be used to um, assign shortcuts uh, to do the most common things. Usually when you're working with a tablet, it's kind of clumsy to stop working and move over to the keyboard and, and you know all the things that are really easy when you're working with a mouse because you have one hand on the mouse and the other one on the keyboard so shortcuts are really easy to do on the keyboard with the tablet you want to move as much of the keyboard shortcuts onto the tablet itself because you know you're you're kind of focused 
with both of your hands on, on the one on the tablet. So the way we do it is if you haven't set it up uh, at all, you want to go to the system settings or settings um, and go to wake up tablet and in here there's a button called map buttons. Now this brings up an overlay. I'm gonna put it on the other display actually. All right, I've decided to do things slightly differently. So not only am I on a different display, I'm on a different computer with a different tablet and I'm shaved and get, wear different clothes, but never mind that. Um, so uh, button mapping, how do we do that? Well, let's demonstrate it. Uh, you've never done this before, so you'll find that in the settings, Wacom tablet, and then map buttons. So what we're gonna set up first is a simple um, keyboard shortcut. It's kind of a, a, an intermediate step that we now support only sending keyboard shortcuts. It has its uh, downsides because you're essentially assigning everything twice. You're uh, defining what keyboard shortcuts you're going to be sending with these buttons, but then also you have to make sure that you map those in the applications themselves so that they do the same thing accordingly. Um, eventually, we'd like to have an API where applications would, uh, you know, register things like. Uh, changing brush size and opacity so the UI is going to change uh, slightly in the future uh, but right now we only have sending uh, shortcuts so let's see how that's done you just push a button from the action list you select send keystroke and then type the keystroke so I'm gonna do Control Z for undo and be done so if I um, close this if I draw something and then I push the button, it's actually going to undo, which is exactly what I want. But we have something new. I've mapped the on-screen help on, on that button so I can get here really fast and change the shortcuts by pushing the edit toggle at the bottom. Uh, bottom. And let's, do, let's change these two buttons to be modifiers. Now, this wasn't possible in the past, but now if I push this button and make it um, shortcut, send keystroke, and then just push shift, it actually assigns the shift. Before that, I mean, in the previous release, you could only assign actual shortcut, not just push uh, modifiers. So that's possible now, and we're gonna set this to be um, control. Okay, and done. And so now I can conveniently pan by hitting the, the button on the stylus, but I also have the control, like I have the mouse in here, I mean the keyboard in here, but let's pretend it's, it's hard to reach or I'm actually drawing like this. And I wanna, you know, rotate the, the canvas, I can just, hold the shift key which is now mapped to this button and rotate the canvas or zoom conveniently. Now this tablet actually has a very nice stand so it can rotate on its own and as you could see um, I could change the angle that I'm working with and that's also uh, the last thing I'm going to show you uh, today. calibration. So why was I talking about angled uh, surface of the screen tablet? Well, uh, the fact that this tablet includes a screen is great for giving you that natural uh, feeling of actually working with natural media. But there is, if you can see, there's quite some distance between the actual tablet and the, and the display. So depending on the angle that you're working with, the, the cursor can shift from 
the tip of your stylus. So what we have in the settings is a simple calibration. So I click on calibrate and then I have these four markers that I'm gonna click on and ignore the texture brokenness. And now I got a precise, well, you know, you probably can't see pixels on the display and even if you did, your angle differs from mine. So the calibration is, uh, for me, from my uh, point of view and the screen tablet. And now I have a precise uh, positioning of the tip of my stylus and the actual cursor that I'm painting at. So I hope you've enjoyed this little demo of uh, the Wacom configuration tools that we have. And uh, do know that there's more things that uh, we didn't cover here. We also have a Wacom configuration in the tweak tools. So those are like engine tweaking uh, things that we don't want to expose to everybody, but they're still there. So if you go to the tweak tool, there's going to be a, a section for Wacom configuration. So if you can't find it in the settings, it's probably going to be there. Thanks guys for watching and see you 